Drive down the streets of Richmond. History stands tall on practically every corner. From presidents and athletes to generals and dancers. The past is revered in the River City, except at the corner of 20th and Cary Streets, where you'll find a lonely parking lot bordered by chain link and a flood wall. It is heartbreaking that you can't go and see something. Long ago, tourists would flock here, gathering to see the place where thousands of men would stumble in with little hope of walking out. This is the most photographed building in town. The notorious Libby Prison, where captured Union officers were held under harsh conditions. So when I stand here, I, I think about them, think about the, the thousands of souls, some of whom would die here. Misery was a soldier's constant companion. The men were prisoners. National Park Ranger Randy Cleaver says with little food and heat, inmates waste away. Day after day, week after week, month after month. As the Civil War grinds on, Libby's population swells to more than 1,200. Cramped inmates reach their breaking point. So as you might understand, uh, it was a very trying experience. In the fall of 1863, a small group hatches a desperate plan to flee. 15 officers decide to dig their way to freedom. This is an enormous undertaking, dangerous. Descending into a dark, rat-infested basement, rotating shifts of three teams tackle their tall task. Nobody wants to be here, nobody. But on the other hand, if you can take action and succeed in breaking out, why wouldn't you? Historian Mike Gorman says the tunneling party uses only a wooden spoon, a knife, and their bare hands. So the challenge is to make this, make this happen, it's, it's staggering. Standing between the inmates and freedom, nearly 60 feet of bricks, mortar, and packed dirt. You're going to do that night after night, day after day, every single night. Secrecy is paramount during their subterranean mission. There was considerable risk. Three failed attempts do not deter the group. Finally, on the night of February 9th, 1864, after nearly three months of clawing at earth, inch by slow inch, the inmates finally burrow through outside the prison walls. You think about how long it would take for a man to crawl through this tiny hole. More than 100 officers squeeze through the two foot wide tunnel and pour into the streets of Richmond under the cover of darkness. Freedom beckoned and they answered. I'm amazed not just about the fact that he was in the prison, but what they did to try to get out. Sandy Kohler Lee's great-great-grandfather, Lieutenant William Wilcox with the 10th New York Infantry is among those who slither to freedom. Obviously the conditions had to be so bad that this was preferable. Sandy's exhaustive research reveals the extent of her ancestors' bravery. Every time I, I look for something for him, it's the story keeps unfolding. Wilcox and the others may be free from Libby, but they're deep in enemy territory. The closest Union lines, 50 miles away in Williamsburg. Here you are, you pop out of this tunnel. Wonderful, I'm free. But I'm in Richmond, Virginia, the capital of the Confederacy. Where do I go? Union sympathizers in Richmond shelter a few of the escapees on the run. The next day, Confederate guards discover the tunnel and sound the alarm. It would be a difficult challenge. You're undernourished, it's the middle of winter, you're not properly clothed. Lieutenant Wilcox's taste of freedom would be fleeting. Unfortunately, he was recaptured a few days later, but just to get that far is just amazing to me. 47 other officers would suffer the same fate as Wilcox and two would drown. But 59 escapees would reach federal lines. The Great Escape generates headlines across the North and South alike. 109 men breaking out, disappearing into the night. It doesn't get much more dramatic than that. At the end of hostilities between the blue and gray, Libby reverts to a bustling warehouse. But this is not where our story ends. Businessman Charles Gunther travels to Richmond to lay eyes on Libby. Gunther buys and ships the old prison brick by brick to Chicago and builds a Civil War museum. By the early 1890s, Libby Prison, the actual building was gone from Richmond, never to return. Gunther's venture suffers financially and is torn down just eight years later. Pieces of Libby scatter across the Midwest. Thankfully, a few precious artifacts survive in Richmond, like this door at the American Civil War Center, the ancient wood covered in graffiti 
carved by Libby prisoners. Here's something tangible. And these massive beams and a lock are on display at Pamplin Historical Park in Dinwiddie. I'm glad he survived or I wouldn't be here today. New Jersey native Sandy Kohler Lee wishes she could visit more than just an empty lot to pay her respects. It made me want to tell his story. She fears without a physical building, the remarkable tale of the intrepid Libby escapees will drift further into obscurity. I think if we don't have monuments like these, people forget. And I don't think they should be forgotten. Any of them, not just my great-great-grandfather, any of them.